Hey guys, so uh, today in the workshop I thought I would do a little bit of a review of my new radio. Now the interesting thing about the Horus X10S to me is that a lot of the reviews that are being posted online are from the I guess perspective or opinion of a quadcopter pilot or a drone pilot, whatever you want to call it. But there seems to be a significant lacking in fixed wing pilots perspective on the Horus. And coming from a Tyrannus X9D Plus pilot, I, I think it might be beneficial to talk about what are the pros, what are the cons, and specifically uh, how I've adjusted to flying using this new radio. So I, I put together a bunch of notes here on this tablet and I'm gonna go over them. So let's talk about what the transmitter comes with. So I'll put that down for a sec. The transmitter, the Horus, comes with this uh, quite nice uh, uh, soft case, travel case, but uh, it also comes with some stickers and it comes with a, a little antenna and uh, you know of course it has internal antennas that you can use and you can switch between external and internal and I'm just using the internal antennas um, haven't bothered using the external antenna because why not anyway uh, it's got a nice little mesh pouch in here so I've got like my AMA card my FAA card my club membership card and I've also got an external module. Now for my testing, I was using the FR Sky protocol as well as I have an old uh, Spectrum DM9 module, which is DSM2, which is fine for flying at like my local club and uh, not really you know, going with that protocol at any events because it does tend to have a lot of brownouts and dropouts and stuff. Um, also what comes with the transmitter uh, is a uh, uh, neck strap and I'll go over that in a minute but it also comes with uh, these plastic black plastic gimbal protectors now the gimbal protectors are <laughs> so this is a 3d part and I'll explain why I have this 3d printed part um, the gimbal protectors basically look like one of these just this little crosshair portion it doesn't have this crossbar it's just two of these things that go right over the gimbals now being that it is a soft travel case, there's no padding on the top side other than that mesh and whatever junk you've got in that pocket. So there's no protection for the toggle switches that are on the front shoulders, the front shoulders of the radio. So those can easily get damaged if the case gets dropped or you know something uh, lands on top of it or shifts around in transit. So I'll put a link in the description for this part. It's fantastic. Found it on Thingiverse, and it fits right over top perfectly well, provides support, and completely covers the toggle switches as well as covers the overall knobs and stuff on the front of the radio as well. Beautiful part. Uh, printed. I uh, printed it pretty slow because I wanted it to be pretty strong. Took about six hours to print. And uh, yeah, highly, highly recommend this. And kind of an oversight, I think, from FR Sky. It's a pretty simple plastic piece to, to have molded to protect that. So maybe a little bit of forethought in the future. If you don't have access to a 3D printer, you can always take the file off of Thingiverse and send it off to a place like Shapeways. That might be a good idea. The other thing that the transmitter comes with is this neck strap. Now, let me talk about this neck strap for a second. Okay, I'm a pretty average sized person, and while the neck strap is wide, I understand that some people like this because it takes, you know, point loads off of your neck. And while while that's, that's true, um, the material is kind of funny. Uh, I, I'm a pretty sensitive person on my skin, but it's got this velvety surface on the inside and then this like plastic pleather stuff on the outside. It just, it, it doesn't seem very sturdy. It's not very comfortable. It doesn't stretch or give or conform all that well. And uh, 
honestly, the wideness is another issue. Uh, you, know, you know, as it gets down here and you get the heft of the radio, these points kind of dig in to my chest and it's a little bit distracting as I fly. So um, for now, I'm just sticking with a standard transmitter strap similar to this one from my Tyrannus. Uh, it works just fine. It's not as bulky. Uh, you, you know, from the sweat, I can throw it in the washing machine. You can't do that with the other one. And, you know, it, it, it's like 95 degrees here. I'm sorry, but plastic and the velvet? No. No, thank you. Um, minor thing, but something worth note because comfort is key when you're flying. So the... Looking at my list again here, I want to make sure that I cover all my bases here. One other thing I need to address. Some people don't understand the need for a balance bar. The Horus X10 and X10S do not come with a balance bar. There is one pin location here, and from the original release, the original release had a different battery. They've gone to a different battery now for their X10S release that is in fact heavier. So the transmitter is off balance by a lot. And when, when you have the transmitter out of balance and it's heavy on the bottom, I tried using that stock location and every time I would let go of the radio, the transmitter would flip down and guess what that did? It would blip up the throttle lever, even just a little bit. So that's a safety thing, and I feel that it's important for people to know that because you really shouldn't have the radio be doing that. I mean, you're getting back into the rubber band days where you, you would wrap a rubber band around the uh, support and then bring it around the back side of the radio and hold down the throttle lever. Come on. I mean, it's a simple aluminum piece. This balance bar I purchased off of eBay. It was $2.50 with shipping and I had to modify it a little bit with my Dremel tool and a little bit of polishing to take the burrs off of after cutting it had two additional holes that were interfering with the screen but I mean it's a simple enough part to include if you know that your weight distribution has shifted you need to include that as a safety feature just my thoughts so the other thing that we got on the list here is the Freelink app that you can get on your smartphone. Now, <laughs> as a fixed wing pilot who doesn't fly any FPV, essentially this is a worthless feature, okay? You can connect your phone to the transmitter through Bluetooth and that's all well and good, but really the only thing you can do is monitor your telemetry data in live mode but you can put that on the screen so it doesn't do anything for fixed wing pilots now you can go in and change the parameters on your flight controller and whatnot if you're flying with quads but it would be nice to have additional features for fixed wing pilots to make the app useful like if I'm out at the field and I don't have a laptop but I do have my phone because I carry that everywhere why can't the app go into the log files? Because those are just Excel spreadsheets that are kilobytes, kilobytes. Why can't you take that data and create a graph off of the telemetry log? That would be a really nice thing to have. Very handy because as fixed wing pilots, we fly a new airplane. We want to see how it performs. And being able to look at the telemetry logs allows us to go back into the radio and make adjustments looking at things like trim levels and things like that. It would be really nice to have that so that we have the data to enable us to be more powerful pilots in terms of our computer programming, which is what FreeSky is all about. All right, so let's talk about the screen. A lot of people ask, you know, how's the screen? And that was one of my questions too. I saw that a friend of mine, Robert Goff, he had his uh, X12S at Flight Fest, and I, I'd been interested in the X10S, and I said, you know, how was the visibility on the screen? And he said, it's great, it's fine, there's no problems with it, and I have to agree. I've had this out in really bright sunlight, I've had it inside, uh, the, the only difficult part is taking pictures of the screen because of contrast on your camera, but 
you know, it, it, it's multiple viewing angles, uh, multiple light levels. It's very easy to see. I have no reservations. I do have concern about uh, screen overheating in the sun when you're at events, but usually I'm just tucking my transmitter back into the case, even if just loosely to keep the screen out of direct sunlight. While we're still on the topic of the screen, I want to address uh, screen positioning. And I'm going to fade in some pictures here as I talk. Um, so the screen on the X10S is about as wide. It's a little bit narrower than what's on the Tyrannus X9D+. Plus. But the, the neck strap position and location, um, because of that narrowness of the screen, it's kind of more difficult uh, to see your flight timer. While, yes, you can get easy program callouts of your flight timers, um, you know, some, especially for like competition flying like iMac, for example, you have a caller who's calling out your, uh, your, your next maneuvers. So being able to look down at the transmitter and see your flight timer to know where you are in the routine and things like that, it's really useful to see your flight timer. Now you can change the position of it through the widgets and being able to move it to the upper right hand corner does in fact make the timer smaller in text size. However, you can compensate for that using the color adjustments in the transmitter to adjust your contrast. So say you have <clears throat> a light blue background, well maybe you want it black or maybe even red. Uh, again, it's really to what suits your eye, but you can change it to different colors to change your contrast. So make sure that you look into that and it's an adjustment. It's an ergonomic adjustment visually as well as in the feel. While we're on the subject of feel, uh, one of the uh, other main differences between the X10S and the X9D Plus is the stick position. The Horus has the sticks 20 millimeters further apart. It's, it's just a wider radio and that does take some adjustment to feel. The other thing is, you know, some people say, well, it's wider, you know, you have to reach further. Really, the, the distance between the edge of the radio and the center of the stick <clears throat> is really not that different. Um, there's a little more direct comparison. So, knowing this, it, it's... I can hold this radio and move this stick just fine with holding my hand. Now, with the back rubber grips, it's a little bit thicker, but moving this stick is just as easy. However, however, the main difference between the X10S and the X9D Plus, and I've got the M9 Hall Effect sensors in mind, is that the stick pivot position on the Horus is closer to the faceplate of the radio. The reason why this is important is when you hold the radio, you do still, even though the stick length is the same, because it's the pivot point is closer to the front, you do have to move your thumb or pinch a little bit further. And I think that that could easily be overcome just by setting the gimbals a little further in to the radio. And this could be done through the aluminum bezel here. Uh, again, it's a different kind of feel, but it's something that you need to be aware of because that can affect like extreme stick maneuver movements for like 3D pilots or precision movements for IMAT competitions or even flying scale when you're doing like Immelman's or Cuban 8's or something like that. You need to be aware that your stick movements physically are going to be long. That, that can potentially be changed with shorter sticks, uh, but I haven't been able to find any really shorter sticks than what's supplied uh, because these are screwed in all the way and the only way to get shorter stick would be to use a wrench or something. To... Yeah, so something there to be aware of. Now the gimbal tension adjustment is quite easy. Four screws on the back, the whole thing pops up adjust your screws and uh, 
you're, you're good, as, good as gold. The feel of these gimbals, I will say, the M9 Hall Effect sensor gimbals are good, good gimbals. These gimbals are better. And let me kind of explain why. The tension on the spring, the, or the, the geometric design of these gimbals is such that when you go to the very end of the stick movement range, the spring tension feels exactly the same as if it were on center. So the amount of pressure you have to apply at the extremes of the stick movements is exactly the same throughout. And this is a problem that plagued the original gimbals on the Tyrannus. They were horrible, crunchy, crunchy gimbals. A lot of people also complain about the centering clickiness. Now that's, that's by design, okay? There's been some amount of clicking in the center and that, that's a tactile feedback kind of thing so that when you're doing slow, precise movements, especially how I fly in scale, you need that kind of tactile feedback to know when you are at the dead center of your stick movements, whether it's side to side or up and down, and even on the rudder, especially on the rudder for doing precise coordinated turns through your entrances and through your exits. So it's not bad, it is just enough. It may sound a little noisy and people have been known to complain about this, but it is there for a reason, and that's why. All right, so a lot of people talk uh, online in these kinds of reviews about the build quality, and there's no question that the build quality is much better on the Horus than the Tyrannus. Very little plastics involved. There is still plastic in the radio, but it's built much, much more solidly. The speaker, while smaller, uh, compared to the stock speaker on the Tyrannus, it's much better. It's perfectly crystal clear. It's just loud enough. Uh, I've got mine not quite turned up all the way. It, I suspect though you would want it turned up all the way if you are a gas pilot or a nitro pilot because of the additional noise. Uh, now I have flown at the field with other pilots who do fly gas and honestly I didn't have that much of a problem. But if you're at a larger event where there are multiple gas engines I can potentially see where you would <clears throat> you would want that turned up all the way. With the screen and the Bluetooth and all the doodads and all of this, that, and the other thing, uh, a lot of people have talked about their concerns for battery life. And that is a legitimate reason. I could go months without recharging my Tyrannus on the life pack that I have in it. And it, you know, just took a licking and keep on ticking. Now, I have been to the field uh, four times with the new radio to fly with it, and they were approximately three hours, give or take, each visit. And I have not had to recharge at all yet, and there's no indication that I do need to recharge yet. So, you know, they say, you know, six, seven hours of, of radio use, that's a lot. Uh, and, you know, I'm not leaving the radio on in between flight. It, you know, the radio is not on for that whole three hours that I'm there. So I don't see this as a true legitimate concern for the majority of pilots. Uh, if you are sitting there and playing with the radio in your settings for a long amount of time, maybe you should consider going into OpenTX and setting up the radio there. I'm an OpenTX user. The FROX is... It's fine. Um, I, I, all my existing models already existed in OpenTX, so it was easier to migrate and customize the radio the way that I'm familiar with and wanted anyway. So, uh, again, that's that that's your prerogative. But uh, those who have looked into using the FR Sky operating system say that it is much more intuitive and quite a bit easier to use than OpenTX, which is a great thing for people just being introduced to FreeSky. I want to talk about the overall flight experience with the Horus. There is no doubt in my mind that this is one of the best radios I could have purchased. So the gimbals themselves are 12-bit resolution, which translates to 
4096. So the high tech Aurora 9 is used by a lot of precision pilots. The club president of my club is the regional IMAC director and he flies with a high tech Aurora 9. And uh, another member of my club also flies with a Aurora 9 and these radios are used a lot in iMac because of the high amount of precision. Now that that also correlates to the precision of the servo. Okay, there there is a relationship there. The amount of steps that a servo can provide and that that sort of dictates how much resolution you can put into it. Um, and, and for the most part, I don't use those kinds of, you know, like $60, $70 servos. What I will say, though, is that this radio feels so much more locked in. Now, I've been flying the Spacewalker, which flies on DSM-2, and I've been flying the P6 Hawk, which flies on the FR Sky protocol. And I, honestly, both of them feel so much more locked in compared to the Tyrannus. And I don't know if it's because of the updated transmitter module in the Horus or if it's because of OpenTX 2.2, whereas my Tyrannus is still on 2.1. I don't know if it's because of the gimbals I, I don't know what it is. I'm not that technical. This isn't a technical discussion. This is purely subjective and perspective perspective. For me, it's night and day. I feel so much more confident as a pilot because I feel connected with the airplane more. When I do maneuvers, I feel like the plane is going much more with what my fingers are telling it to do on the sticks. And I feel like this is more of a radio that I can grow with that's going to challenge me as a pilot where I can go to those more expensive servos and truly notice a difference. I'm a pretty picky person. And a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, that kind of resolution, the average pilot isn't going to notice. I'm telling you right now, I noticed right away the first flight of both of these airplanes, which I fly the snot out of. I know them inside out and upside down. That's why I've been flying them. It's a totally different game. It's It just feels more natural. And I love, love, love this radio. That being said, the FR Sky protocol is, you know, for lack of a further technical discussion, it's geared more toward range, whereas Spectrum has always been more about reducing latency. And given that this is DSM-2, which is quite old at this stage, I, I really couldn't tell a difference in terms of latency. They just both, both airplanes on the two different protocols felt more locked in overall. It, it, it's truly, truly a, a different flying experience and it's just that. You have to experience it. And uh, I I'm telling you, as a fixed-wing pilot, a solely fixed-wing pilot, that this is an exceptional, exceptional radio. I really feel like with this radio, I can grow as a pilot. I feel like I can really start practicing more finite-scale maneuvers with this because I'm noticing these kinds of difference. Looking at even even wing rock from thermals as I fly through them, it, it just there's so much more precision in the flying that I can do because I notice it more, and it it really is just amazing. The open trend, the open TX uh, software migration is pretty easy. Joshua Bardwell's got a great great video that's just a few minutes long. I followed that one even though it was for uh, open TX 2.1. Worked fine in 2.2, uh, no hiccups, no bricks, um, just overall very, very easy. But one key point I will make is that because OpenTX is for multiple different types of radios, the first thing you want to do is a, go into the transmitter settings and change your battery voltage limits because that was the most annoying thing because every 30 seconds, low battery warning, 
low battery warning. Low ba oh, it was so annoying. And then I finally figured out how to do it. So do that first. Save yourself some headache. And uh, the six, the, there, there's an additional knob on the Horus that has a six position knob that uh, can easily be used for different flight modes. And I think that's a really good feature for sailplane pilots because they're going to use those for sure. And uh, I look forward to trying to figure out how I can incorporate those into my models as well. Again, more flexibility, right on. So going to find images for these planes, you know, I had some custom images that I made for my planes, like the Bugatti, like my Sikorsky, even a, a picture of my SE-5A. I had those on my Tyrannus, but there's a wonderful website. If you haven't heard of it, go check them out. They've got beautiful color, black and white, you name it, any kind of pretty much any kind of image you can think of. Sky Raccoon, skyraccoon.com. They've got background images, uh, but I was even able to find the Bugatti 100 in color and black and white for OpenTX, for FR Sky OX. I, I mean, it just, it blew, blows my mind how much artwork is there and it's completely free. So definitely check that guy out and be sure to donate if you're able to because that man, that guy's doing a bang up job. So other than that, guys, I really don't have a whole lot of other comments. Um, I mean, in, in my opinion, the cons are just minor quibbles. OK, it's an adjustment. It's a new radio. It's a different format. There's going to be ergonomic changes. There's going to be visual as well as tactile ergonomic changes. So you cannot go into this radio expecting it to be like any other radio because it's just not. What you can take away from it is being confident that for a fixed wing pilot, this really can help you progress as a pilot. I, I firmly believe that I will progress as a pilot. And I, I know that you will too because I, I'm just an average pilot. I, I, I just go and fly. I'm perfectly happy flying in circles. So with those things being said, I'm, I purchased this radio from the flight test store. The purchase price was $430 uh, and free shipping, by the way, for, I forget what it was, but I, there was free shipping on it. It did come with the FR Sky, FR Sky RM9, R9M long range, whatever. Don't care. Uh, the 900 megahertz system. Um, if that floats your boat, fine. But uh, you know, I it came well packaged, and I'm I'm very very pleased with this radio. I look forward to many years of use with it, and uh, with just a little bit of minor modification and additional parts, um, that $400 is just phenomenal, phenomenal value, and. Uh, let me, got, let me know what you guys think about this review. Uh, leave a comment. Any additional questions, I'll be happy to answer them in the comments below. And thanks again. I'm Joshua Orchard.